Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time welcome to my channel. My name is Marlene. I talk about my own eating disorder recovery and everything related to healing the relationship with food, with your own body and with movement. And I got so many questions about the topic extreme hunger. So we're going to dive right into the topic today. And just a quick recap for those of you who are not familiar with the term extreme hunger, healing hunger or post-starvation hyperphagia. It is a phenomenon that actually occurs in like many, many, many people with eating disorders in their recovery and healing hunger is basically that you like non-stop have mental and or physical hunger. Physical hunger, as the name says, is physical and for many, many people it feels like they just don't get satisfied. They eat and eat and eat and they are still hungry. For some people, mental hunger occurs. This is when they don't really feel physical hunger, mainly because of their hormones or because they suppress their hunger for so long that they just don't have normal hunger cues anymore, but they think about food non-stop and they look at food pictures and all that kind of stuff that's mental hunger and the key in recovery is to listen to your physical and your mental hunger no matter how much you have to eat and for many people it is like a lot and that is why we call it extreme hunger but in fact extreme hunger is not that extreme and I will tell you why so there are certain reasons for extreme hunger and we're gonna dive into the science a little bit and also into like how long my own extreme hunger lasted and all that kind of stuff so let's go so I want you to imagine that you're going on a hike and you forgot your water bottle and you're like super super thirsty and it's like a three-hour hike and you have no water so when you like finally get home and you get water you like chug it down you just drink all the water and you would never judge yourself for that right healing hunger is actually the same thing so you suppressed your own hunger and like you starved yourself for so long or like you under ate for so long that your body is just screaming for food and sending you all the signals and healing hunger is so important because it's the body's mechanism to survive so if we look at evolution it just makes sense because your body thinks there's a famine going on and once there's food available it just wants to send you all those signals so that you eat in order to survive your body is like slowing down all the important things like your heart rhythm, your metabolism, body temperature, many people lose their period, all that kind of stuff. So in order to get back to healthy body functions, your body needs a lot of energy and that's actually way more than many people think. Another reason for extreme hunger are changes in your hormones and I'm going to tell you why. So two of the most important hormones when it comes to healing hunger are ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is kind of your hunger hormone and it gets released when you need to eat. It is appetite stimulating and it gets released when your stomach is empty. Your body is so smart though that it isn't enough to like fill up your stomach for instance with salad or low calorie foods. Your body can tell if you get enough energy in your stomach or not. And if there's not enough energy, your body will release more ghrelin. So if you didn't eat enough, your body will release ghrelin, which will travel to the hypothalamus region of your brain and then stimulate nerve cells to give you hunger cues. In order to secure your survival, if you don't eat enough, your body will raise the ghrelin levels significantly. You can actually show it in the blood. So there were a lot of studies with people with anorexia nervosa and their ghrelin levels were super high. The thing with anorexia nervosa is that even though we feel hungry, we will still just ignore the hunger, which will lead to even more raise of the ghrelin levels in your body. The other hormone I just mentioned is leptin. Leptin is kind of the antagonist to ghrelin and it's kind of like your satiety hormone. Leptin also gets produced by the fat cells. So if somebody is heavily underweight and doesn't really have enough fat cells, your body won't produce leptin, which means that your body don't, doesn't have the satiety hormone. Leptin is also very important for your metabolism, for your immune system and a lot of other bodily functions. So it's not just there to like make you feel Satisfied after eating, it actually has a lot of very, very important functions in your body. In a healthy human being, the leptin levels are proportional to the body fat amount. That doesn't occur for people in eating disorders because your body needs to feel safe in order to create leptin levels. So even if you gain body weight and thus also fat quickly, your body will take longer to create leptin levels, hence the healing hunger. So your body gains weight already, but it needs more time and actually needs even more food in order to trust you enough to create leptin levels again. 
It is also very important to understand that everybody has a certain set point. So for one person that has a lower set point, their body fat might be enough to create enough leptin levels. But another person who has a higher set point may have to gain more weight in order for their body to create healthy leptin levels. And actually the leptin levels are one reason for the set point theory. A third reason for post-servation hyperphagia, aka eating hunger or extreme hunger, is the internal and external reparations of your body. So eating disorders can cause a lot of damage and you don't have to be quote unquote underweight from a BMI standpoint. I always repeat it, I'm not a fan of the BMI, but if you under eat or over exercise, you stress out your body and that can cause a lot of damage. We're talking about bone density loss, maybe period loss, we talk about brittle skin, dry hair, organs that can suffer and a lot more things. Some people have changes in their vision, all these kind of things. The good news is a lot of those things can be reversed when you recover. I personally had a lot of issues with my body and my body is still healing, but a lot of my issues, including osteoporosis, were actually reversed. So that is an amazing thing to know. But in order for your body to do so, it needs so much energy. Like I'm, I'm telling you, people have no idea how much energy your body needs. So one reason for extreme hunger is that your body knows that it wants to repair everything because it's a survival mechanism, right? So it needs a lot of food and your body won't just start to repair everything once you eat the first day. Your body has to gain a little bit weight and has to have some reserves first before it starts healing your internal damage. And a lot of it we can't see. So a lot of people gain weight, maybe are an overshoot weight. I made another video about that and they think, well, now I should be healthy, right? But it takes so much longer for your body to repair all the cells, all the bones, all the organs, everything internally, your metabolism. It can take a while. So even when you gained weight already, it doesn't mean that everything is healthy again. And then there are some things that your body doesn't prioritize right away. So for instance, my hair or my nails were damaged way longer than some other things because that's simply not a priority for your body. And I like the analogy of money. So imagine you had a lot of debt, you maybe borrowed money from a friend and you finally work again and you pay off your debt and then your balance, your bank statement balance is at zero. You wouldn't just go and buy a $20,000 car right away. No, you would actually save more money just in order to not get into that debt again and like save more money and maybe even save more money than 20K before you spend it all along. That's the same thing that your body is doing. Your body won't just stop at zero, if you will, which is your set point. Your body will probably overshoot. And one other reason for that is that your body wants to restore 100% of the fat-free mass that it needs to live. But in order to restore 100% of the fat-free mass, it actually needs to overshoot your fat mass, which also gets gained way faster than the fat-free mass. I did a video about overshoot weight and I'm gonna include the graph right here because it just shows you that your body will first gain fat mass in order to create those leptin levels in order to have enough energy enough reserves to like repair internal damage and then slowly but surely it will recreate the fat free mass and when the fat free mass is at 100 percent it can slowly get let go of overshoot weight and another reason for extreme hunger is your brain you know i love to talk about the brain so of course we have to talk about this today as well so you starved yourself for so long. You suppressed your hunger cues. Maybe you forbid yourself certain foods. Maybe you didn't eat over a certain amount of calories. You know, all those rules that every single person with an ED has. So now that you're eating again and you're trying to get out of the scarcity mindset, your brain is like still thinking about food so much because it was forbidden for so long or at least a certain number or a certain amount was forbidden for so long so your brain will like constantly think about the one thing that is forbidden because again it's a scarcity mindset so in order to get out of the scarcity mindset you actually have to eat and eat and eat every single thought you have about food and i know it sounds extreme you have to go a lot of people actually experience night hunger which can be a relict of the eating disorder because many many people actually struggle with eating during the day and then in the eating disorder or they just allow themselves to eat at night. So this can be a habit that occurs also in recovery. I recently got a question via email and I was telling them, even though you think you might eat enough already during the day, 
if you still experience night hunger so much and you experience like extreme hunger so much at night it might be worth to overthink the amount that you're eating at the day like maybe you need even more and again we're underestimating how much food our body needs in recovery but it is really a lot and there is literally no limit at all and maybe you can also like allow yourself more snacks, more candy, more sweets during the day because then you let go of those old rules of, oh, I can only have candy at night and so I have to have all of it at night. It makes actually more sense to like try to incorporate it in your daily life, in your daily diet, if you will. And then if you still experience extreme hunger at night, go for it, listen to it. I would actually sometimes wake up two hours after I laid down being super hungry and I would listen to it. I would always keep snacks in my bedroom. I would always try to listen to my mental and my physical hunger. And this is what brought me here. And I completely understand the fear of losing too much weight, of overshoot weight, especially when you're coming from an eating disorder. Like people don't understand how big of a shift that is. But as with many, many things in life, Sometimes things have to go from one extreme to another extreme. I really don't like to call it an extreme because basically it is just surviving and doing the right thing. But sometimes we have to go from under eating to eating a lot for a long amount of time before things can finally balance out. And a lot of you asked me how long my extreme hunger lasted. And it's hard to tell because it would like come and go like within the last month. In the, in the first month, I would have constantly thoughts about food and eating and mental hunger and physical hunger. But it like slowly went down, but it would still come and go. So I had some days where I didn't really experience mental hunger anymore, and then it came back. And that also showed me that maybe on the days where my mental hunger was not that big anymore, I still tended to not eat enough. So I prioritized bigger portions. I tried to eat a little bit more, even on the days where my extreme hunger was not that loud. And it actually helped with the other days because extreme hunger is always an answer to under eating. So for me, it was probably like at least 18 months or something like this. But again, I can like really put a finger on it. It, was, it would come and go. So please don't compare yourself to me. For some people it is shorter, for some people it is way longer. However long your extreme hunger lasts, you have to listen to it. And I promise you that is the key to recovery. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your questions. Also, my books are finally out. I know it took a while, but the paperback version and the ebook version are available on Amazon right now. And thank you, thank you, thank you for every single person who's like watching my videos. And I love you guys. Thank you for this amazing community. And I will see you in the next one.